if you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual coach. And I'm here, as always, with my friend Joshua Radawan, amazing spiritual coach and mastering the work with the people working in the paranormal. So if you're one of those people, you know, you ought to check it out because, damn, you guys keep going into places without proper protection. So let's not do that. Anyway, the upshot today is we're going to be talking about, oh, shit, (laughs) Kundalini awakening. Am I dying or expanding? And so... This was Josh's idea for an episode because Josh has recently gone through a Kundalini awakening. Now, I have a retreat that he is going to be at in November in which we will be doing Kundalini activations. And he had to be an overachiever and have one on his own before we got there because that's just Josh's style. (laughs) But... You know, so if you're if you're all excited about the Kundalini Awakening and you're looking to, to get some help on that, I can do that for you. And we do have a couple of spaces at the time of this recording, which is early August. We have two spaces left in the Adventures in Energetics retreat. You do have to be able to protect yourself, as in you have to be able to have shields and be able to manage your own energy field, manage your own emotions, and have a working knowledge of of basic energetics in order to come to this event. It is an advanced, um, not an advanced, it's an intermediate event. event. And so uh, you can't be a raw beginner to come to this. But... The cool part is we're going to be doing some some more advanced stuff than you'll find in most other places. So if you're interested in that, you can uh, check it out at the kellysparta.com site, and it's in the events section. So that is here in Boquete, Panama. It is a seven-day, six-night retreat, and it is freaking amazing. I'm super excited. And we're also going to be spending some time doing some seeing of the Panamanian things we're going to do a chocolate tour we're going to do a volcan baru tour where we're going to go up to the top of the volcano here in boquete which is at eleven thousand feet and is the only place on the planet where on a clear day you can see both the atlantic and pacific oceans at the same time i have been told it is a transcendent experience i haven't done it yet but that's what i've been told so it's going to be really cool i'm so excited anyway so josh here (laughs) has been going through his Kundalini awakening early because he's like that. So you want to talk about what that, so let's, let's first define what a Kundalini awakening is. Let's talk about what the Kundalini is. The Kundalini is an energy that lives at the base of your spine and it is represented as a snake that goes back and forth up your spine, back and forth around the chakras, right? So it's, it makes its way up the chakras from your, the base of your spine all the way up to your crown, and it activates a higher level of energy that you then get to work with. And it is both an expansion and it can be quite disruptive because the kundalini is expanding your... So if you think about your energy as a hose running through the center of your being... Most people's hoses start off kind of like quarter inch dishwasher hoses, right? They're these tiny little plastic hoses and they got a little bit of energy and that's what you got. And then if you work it, then it works its way up to like a garden hose, right? And you're like, okay, I've got more energy. Look at me. I can do this. And and the more energy you're running, the more you have to work with on an energetic level, on a magical level, on a healing level, on everything, right? However... Every time you expand your hose, you have to clear all the blocks that are in the way of that hose expansion. And that expansion, so there's, there are two ways to expand your hose. Way one is the healthy way, which is to just work with it over time and keep working with it. And eventually it expands and it grows and, and, and it's all good, right? The, the other way to grow your hose is to, 
work it to the point where you're feeling kind of buzzy when you do it and a little like things ain't right and I'm like overdone and maybe you feel like you've got ants on your skin or you want to crawl out of your skin and you're like Ugh, so much and you're and then you explode your hose now will that grow your hose yes it will grow your hose the problem is it will also take you months to recover and sometimes longer right so and you will be toast during that time because expanding your hose by exploding it bad right because <laughs> then you have to wait for it to recoalesce and re reform and, and in that time your shields are not so great and your wards are not so great and your ability to manage your energy is terrible and your your energetic field sucks <laughs> and I just need some help with healing and there's just it's all sorts of, this is what I call blowing, blowing yourself up. Don't do this. It's, it's really, people are like, oh, but it's faster. It is not faster. It takes you longer to recover than it would have to just expand the hose on a, on a healthier way. Right? So trust me when I say this, because I've done this. <laughs> okay. I did this path a couple times. It was a bad idea. Okay. Please learn from my mistakes. Anyway, the, I know you won't, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> Can you hear everybody? I, my people are stubborn. They're like, ah, I can do it. I can do it. She couldn't do it, but I could do it. <laughs> it's, it's fine. You can do it. But you know, when you come to me for healing, I will say, I told you so, and then I'll fix it. It's okay. <laughs> but you do have to listen to, I told you so when you do that. So, okay. So the, uh, so that's, so as you're expanding your, your energy field, that's what happens, right? Is you're, you're growing your ability to move and hold energy. Now, when you open the Kundalini, it is a massive increase in your energy flow. If you have a spontaneous Kundalini awakening, what happens is that you can end up exploding your energy field by accident because trying to control the Kundalini when it awakens is difficult by yourself. Um, I did Kundalini awakenings for my ritualist trainees a few years back. And what happened with that was some people had the awakening and they could feel the extra energy flow and they could integrate that. And that was awesome. And it worked great. Other people's energy fields were not quite ready for that level of energy. And so we actually had to dial it back. And so because I was facilitating the, the transition, I could do that because they were literally like shaking when the energy came fully up. They were like, ah, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's too much. Let's dial it back. Right. So, you know, that that's one of those pieces that you discover as you're going through the process. And so with a spontaneous awakening, you don't have somebody there who can moderate that for you. Right modulate that for you. So Josh, why don't you talk about your experience <laughs> so that uh, people can you know, learn. You know, we tell a lot of magical stories on here and I'll tell you, this has to be one of my most profound experiences on the journey yet. I want to say that I had no intention of activating this on my own <laughs> at all. You know, I, you know, when you, when you, look into, you know, like the internet will tell you everything and it doesn't really matter. You know, like what happens to you is what happens to you. And that's just the way it is. You know, like when we were talking, there's like no real true guidebook for this. You know, it's different for everybody. So, you know, I, I read about the yogis experience in this, you know, blissful state and, you know, this new sense of being, that was not the case for me, <laughs> you know, not to scare anybody, but I'm going to be very, you know, open and transparent about what it was for me. So, you know, I was, for me, it, the whole thing comes down to balancing the feminine energy within me. That's what it's been teaching me, right? I've been in my masculine for a long time. And it, and it was about a heart activation on a, on a deeper level. This is some of the deeper level work that I had been struggling with. So I, I had come to a precipice in my life where I was at this crossroads again. And I needed to do a certain level of healing in a short amount of time. So I did some spell work, which I rarely do. So the, the the whole night before this was crazy because I had people randomly show up at my house and I actually gifted away my snake that had been had been with me since my birthday. And 
you know, I, I was I was really struggling on an emotional level uh, the few days leading up to this. You know, a lot of personal stuff going on, a lot of a lot of a lot of gears shifting in life, and a lot of uncertainty. And I didn't know that I could hold a vibration of unconditional love for those I cared about the most. So I decided to bring some magic into this in order to, you know, speed line the process. So I, I did a I did a healing spell, a self love spell, and. That night, you know, as I was laying down, you know, I was still in very rough shape, you know, like, you know, you, a few days later, you actually helped put me back in my body. I was very much out of my body for a lot of this experience, and that only threw me out farther. So that night, you know, like all the smoke alarms in my house just start randomly going off. I'm hearing tings on metal pots and pans. I'm like, well, I know what this is. And I was like, I don't, I can't deal with it. <laughs> I was like, I don't have the energy. I was like, I've been here before. I've always survived. I am just going to go to bed. <laughs> so I, I, I went to sleep so that night. You, for go. those people who don't know what it, they, they're going to say, I don't know what it is. Tell us what it is. So, so know you know what it is, but they didn't, they don't know. So I, have had work with different entities over over time and what happens when i'm in that lower vibrational state which i very much was you know in, in trying to understand a situation that just needed to be let go and surrendered to you know i was throwing myself deeper into an emotional abyss and this is what some of these darker things tend to feed on so as we are also moving out of the house, some of my warding is a little iffy. You know, it did some restructuring afterwards and, and some new things. But because of that and not being in my normal peak, you know, you know, position mentally and emotionally, you know, these things were coming in. And I was just like, I can't deal with it. I, I just I was like, I know what it is, but I just I don't have the bandwidth to, to fix it right now. So I, I laid down and uh, four in the morning. I woke up out of a dead sleep. I had a nightmare about something coming right at me. And I woke up and I, I go out to the kitchen and I just start dry heaving. Like all of this darkness and poison that I had been within me for a long time, you know, like, you know, even doing this work for a long time, right? Um, we tend to still hold on to stuff, right? I mean, that's what the process is. We're letting go of certain things, you know, as time goes on. But when we have what it seems like some higher calling or an elevated path of some kind spirits like you need to to move through this and I, I i believe that's why the 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 kundalini came spontaneously like it did and so i'm dry heaving and i can just feel all of these things like leaving me and it's it's very painful and i'm on i'm on fire from my root to my crown my crown i was like okay this is the big one and i've just i just accepted death <laughs> i was like this is it i was like you know i'm i'm you know probably gonna die here and i've been here before right so i'm like i'm not like overly freaked out you know i i imagine this would freak most people out but for what it's worth i've been here so many times that it's like okay if this is it then whatever <laughs> you know like i i just I'm, I'm i'm okay with it um and then i i laid back down and i i laid down for three hours and i was really lost and, and I, I don't know where that three hours went. You know, there were parts where I was calling on my ancestors to help me through this process. I was calling on the, uh, the atheists I work with, you know, per, specifically I was working deeply with Jesus and with Nix, um, as they were the two that were calling out to me. And I, I stepped outside of myself and I was also trying to pull some of this stuff out, out, out of me because I, I couldn't hold it anymore. <laughs> so, you know, that was that was the, the the that day's process, and the uh, the next morning I woke up and I, I reached out to you. I reached out to a couple other medicine men I've worked with, and you know I, I got some you know like in true universal fashion. One of the things that the Kundalini was pushing out was my unwillingness to ask for help, and so I reached out to everybody. I was like, guys, I am fucked up. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't know what's happening, and you know I had I had some great advice at that time that really led me to the key points that were what the Kundalini was trying to teach me. You know, it, it was about self-love. It was about being able to nurture myself. And it was about opening the heart, right? Like at this time we are, you know, it seems to me from everything I'm witnessing in the collective is that we are going through a collective heart chakra activation at this time. So that being said, the heart has been the hardest part for me because of all the things I've went through. It's like 
I have been able to live or I've been able to act through my heart, right? But to live through it has been different. You know, my my head and my heart were seldom in alignment with each other. Like I could portray myself and be this person in the world and hold this space from this place in the world. But my head was seldomly in alignment with it because of all the noise, all of the, the darkness, all of the poison that I had had in this well. You know, it was really an artisanal well moment because it was the Kundalini pushed a lot of that garbage out. So, you know, for me, what what it's taught me so far, and I'm I'm really unsure at the, this time because it's like it come, you know, like the 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 initial blast was so heavy and I felt it so through my system. And then the next few days, I just saw like the bottom three chakras. They were very warm, right? So I, I'm, I'm really not sure because I'm having a, you know, I'm just, it, it just is what it is. You know, like you gave me the advice to not force it. So I'm just allowing it to be what it is. You know, it's, it, it showed me a lot of things. Uh, but one of the things when I reached out to one of the medicine men, you know, he, he told me to cover my right eye. And I spent a lot of time doing that this week because the, the left side, is a more a rewiring of the feminine side of the brain or the, you know, communication, emotional section, you know, and, you know, we talked before about the Chinese element and I'm, you know, on, on here and I'm very much a water is my home and fire or wizards is what's always pushed up against me. You know, like uh, when I, when I, when I look at being able to balance all of these, it is emotion that I struggle with the most within others and within myself. You know, I fail to allow myself to truly feel it. And it's been one of the tougher parts of my process. So, you know, as, as this was going on over the next day, you know, I spent a significant amount of time in meditation and I, uh, I began shifting my consciousness to the left side of my brain or to my left side in general. And I began to feel this rewiring process taking place. And it, it's funny because I still have like a, a twitch under my left eye occasionally as this process is ongoing. It, it's lessening though. So, you know, that, that led me into the, the next day, you know, and I was really just kind of resting off and on, getting deep into meditation, getting, you know, deeper into myself of what, you know, what, what, what's going on here. But the truth is I was still very much out of my body. And it was so funny because this is, you know, how it all lines up. You had done a reading on me that previous Friday that brought a lot of past life stuff that really also was a part of bringing all of this to, to fruition. It was all, you know, like when you, when you go through it and I'm a pattern seer, right? That's what I do. I recognize patterns in myself. I recognize patterns in people and I recognize patterns in the universe. So when I, I see all of the points of what led up to this, you know, you can, it, it's amazing, right? It's so amazingly divine in its orchestration, you know, but I, so I'd been doing this, this work with, with my angels and with my ancestors, with my guys to pull some of these entities because I knew they were there um, at this point that I, I had some attachments that I needed to get rid of. And I, I, I shit you not. I, I'm three minutes outside of my meditation and Kelly just rings me up and she rang, she rang me up because she misread one of the things I had said in one of the groups. And I was like, no, that, that, that's not, but, but, but when you look at it from, I needed her help at that time, right? When you can see it from that perspective and that's exactly what it was, you know, like spirit works in mysterious ways. And, you know, she was able, you know, she saw me and she saw a lot of the things that, were going on inside of me, you know, like I had this interdimensionally woven implant, you know, and then I, <laughs> I was outside of my body and I had a house full of shit that I was in no shape to clear myself at this time. And that was one piece of it too. You know, like I, I started to, I started to find clarity because all of these things that weren't around me, I've been so attached to these past life entities that I brought in with me that I've made them part of my identity. And I, the truth is, is I don't know their purpose in the big scheme of this life, but I'm ready to let go of that for the time being. Like it's, it's not serving what I'm trying to do and it's not serving my closest relationships and it's not serving how I speak my truth into the world. I, you know, and I, I can look back at some of the videos now that I've recorded over the last few years and I can see my voice change when something else takes hold. And I'm like, okay, you know, like this is good stuff. It's all, it's all learning. Right. So Kelly helps me, you know, move through this and, and it's great. And I, I reached out to another buddy who's a, a fantastic quantum healer named Matt Schmidt. And 
he's amazing. He's amazing. And, and, and what, like I said, you know, this has been about a balancing of the feminine and masculine energies for me. So it took me to the heart. Like this has been the crux of my work from the very beginning. And because unconditional love for myself and for others was something that I just truly had not be able to get to, you know, to, to the other side of it. Like I could conceptualize it, but it's not, a, it's not about conceptualizing it. It's about feeling it. And I, I could not for the life of me get there because of my analytical mind, because of that masculine side, because of that, you know, logical brain that is always, you know, just, just thinking about it instead of dropping down. And I had been being able to drop down more over the couple months leading to this. But, uh, so I, 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 then I, you know, I was, it was interesting because the next morning I went to lay with nature and I'm laying out there and I'm like, okay, spirit, like, help me move this energy. And I'm very much in my masculine about this. Right. And I'm like, help me move this energy. And I'm just getting bit by mosquitoes. And I'm like, okay, this, I'm trying to control this. This sucks. <laughs> I was like, this sucks. And I swear the second I rolled to my stomach, I just felt, I started moving like a snake through the grass. And I began to feel what it is to be the feminine essence, right? To be in that, that state of flow of freedom of, you know, something I had never truly allowed myself to be, you know, because I'm very much in control or <laughs> had the illusion of control for so long. Um, and then I did, then I did a, the quantum healing session with my friend and I found we did a soul retrieval at that time. And what did, what did, you know, the dreams were very telling leading up to this. And I shared some of them with you and you know, th there was some deep work to do with my mother, which you also brought up in that, in that reading what it was. And, you know, and once again, this is the beauty of this process is that I can see all the signs that led me to this place. And, you know, I had, I had been gifted some photographs about two weeks ago and it showed me from the age of two, three, four, and five. Right. And my mom left between four and five, two and three and four. I'm just smiling. I'm bubbling. I just, I have that child exuberance at five. I look dead behind the eyes and you know, I'd always been aware there was work to do there. I just didn't know it was soul retrieval work. The The thing is, and this is, this is how beautiful this process is and how also taxing it is um, to, to, to come to the understanding of why things happen the way they happen. You know, the, the, the piece I'd struggled with in unconditional love is that I didn't have that piece of me. My mother had been holding the piece of unconditional love for me in her heart for 35 years. And I had been holding a deeper level healing from the work that I had done that is going to help her. We had, we had traded a piece of each other's soul when she left. And, you know, and, and, you know, I became one with her consciousness for a bit. I stepped into her being and I was able to, you know, like what we were talking about is not seeing her as a mother, but as a human. And I always, once again, it's something you can conceptualize, but it's a different to feel it. And that's, that's what this process has been for me. And then we found a whole bunch of thought forms and shit in there. You know, a lot of stuff that I had, you know, there, there was a lot of, you know, and, and it, it taught me more how much of a warrior I really am, you know, and not that I'm manifesting more of those battles into my life, but be able to, to be able to hold space for everyone around me while having this much stuff going on inside of me just showed me how big my heart truly is and how yeah. I was still able to pull you know, away from that enough to be able to walk with myself and to walk with others during this process. And it, that taught me a deeper level of unconditional love for myself. And, you know, it's, it, it's been a ride since, you know, it's, uh, I feel more clarity. I feel warmer, you know, because of, of the energy and there's a, there's a warmth in there. And it's, you know, it's, it's still an ongoing integration process right now. You know, like I'm learning what unconditional love is for me and for others and how that functions inside of boundaries. And, but I, but I have a deeper understanding of each individual's journey. And, and this is something that's been harder for me in direct and close relationships, you know, gr always great at holding space for others. The people I love the most 
and the love, you know, I, I have had deeper level control issues with, and that's what the Kundalini showed me is like, you have to tap into that feminine to understand why it needs to be wild and free. And, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, so that's, that's been my process. Well, so, you know, this is one experience. If you Google Kundalini awakening, you will find so many experiences. There's entire books written on this topic and they're everybody's kundalini experience is different right so the reason it's easier for the ex for the monks is because they're already doing that work right they're already doing that balancing work that's already what so you can make the process easier for yourself by engaging the process right um but this is something that i i run into with all the spiritual students that i work with so you start off working in the masculine because that's where most of our work is that's where our culture is that's where you know, most of the spiritual practices are is strip away, strip away, strip away until you become nothing and you become one with everything. But the feminine process is the opposite. It's the accept and receive, accept and receive, accept and receive without judgment, with compassion, everything until you become everything and you become one with everything. And so the, the masculine is a very mental process in a lot of ways. The feminine is not a mental process. You know, it is a, an experiential process. And so with masculine, you're like trying to understand everything, right? It's a, the a masculine is the, the white of the yin yang, right? So it's in the light and the, the feminine is in the darkness. It's the black of the yin yang. It's, it's the great mystery, right? And so people go out of the masculine and they go into their feminine and they go looking for the light switch so they can understand it. And it's like, there is no light switch to understand the feminine. You, you do not understand the feminine. You experience the feminine. And the experience of that is what brings you into your compassion because it is all about the feelings. It is all about the experience. It is all about the embodied state. And so the feminine is the part of ourselves that exists on the planet. And the masculine is the part of ourselves that is the spirit, right? And so, and I, I, again, I'm going to say, don't come for me. This is not male, female gender. It is traditional teachings. Please translate accordingly. There we go. Okay. So the, but this, this shift into the feminine self is a shift into the beingness state, right? And uh, I love that he had you cover one of your eyes because that is, that activates the Odin archetype in Norse mythology. Uh, Odin has one blind eye and one eye that he sees through and the blind eye is how he sees into the other world and the other eye is how he sees into this world. And so the, the balancing of those two is in the covering of the single eye, right? And so uh, that's a balancing of your inner and outer worlds, right? Which is a little different than masculine and feminine, but but we love symbology because balancing duality is balancing duality is balancing duality, right? So it, it all relates in that regard. And so not surprising that a Kundalini awakening would cause you to have to balance those because the Kundalini is literally coming up the spine back and forth. And that is a similar representation to the snakes on the caduceus. In, uh, if you ever look at a, a medical caduceus, the, it snakes intertwining back and forth. Or, and if you look, there's spots in between for where those chakras are, right? And so it's, it's the same sort of concept. You know, the snakes in the time before patriarchy, snake was representative of healing and transformation because, you know, they shed their skin and they become something new and so on and so forth. So... All of these pieces are symbolic uh, attributes of kundalini work. And so, you know, as the kundalini comes up your spine, it, it breaks free the stuff that is in the way and it brings it up for healing, right? So the more healing work you've done before your kundalini awakening, the better off you are because, you know, you've, there's nothing, there's not as much in the way. This is similar to if you guys have had a Reiki attunement, they talk about having a, a healing crisis that can happen when you get Reiki attunements. Same idea. Anytime you're expanding an energy flow through your body, 
it will break th break free anything that's in the way of your your expansion of that energy field. This is the other reason why you don't want to explode your energy field is because all that shit comes up to the surface. Okay, you know it just goes, and now your exploded energy is all amongst all the shit that you just exploded with it. So, yeah, just it's just just don't do it. Okay, so I think that's what we have for for this week. Unless you have anything else you want to add. You know, if you go through this process, just breathe and allow it. Don't try to rationalize it. It's not going to work. <laughs> just to yes. find yourself into a space of calm. Know that you're going through something that is for your highest good. Otherwise, spirit wouldn't give you anything you couldn't handle. And just be gentle with yourself because a lot of your life is going to come in review during this time. And... You know, it's it's important to be able to observe it, but not be attached to who you were, but who you're becoming because of this process. Yeah, that's a great way to say that. The being state is about allowing. It's about being with, not trying to control, not trying to understand, not trying to direct, not trying to say, well, when is this going to be over, right? That's another control pattern, right? It's just being with it and going, okay, this is where I am. Let me just be here and see what this has to, to offer. Stay in curiosity, stay in the experience, stay in the allowing of the, the process. And, you know, when, you know, if, if the things come up that are really uncomfortable, just if you need a break from the being with, you can always go up into your observer mind and watch yourself be with it. And that allows you to take a little break from the experience of it while still being with the experience of it, right? So you can either be in it or you can watch yourself be in it. And both places are still being in it as long as you don't go into analyzing, right? So that's the that's the important part in this process and then this is this is something that happens a little further on in your energetic process so if you're just beginning don't panic this is this stuff is pretty advanced it's not going to happen to you don't don't take it as a oh shit i shouldn't be here no 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 you're fine by the time you get to this state you know how to deal with it okay but you know this is uh, if this is something that you're going through, then know that that's the case. And if you find that you're having challenges and you're, you know, having, you've exploded your energy field or you've, you've lost your shields and now you need some help getting back in your body, know that this is what we're here for. <laughs> you know? Reach out, schedule a session. We will take care of you. We've got you. Okay. We go through this so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or so that we can help you get out the other side faster either way. Sometimes yeah, we, we that's, a, that's a better way to put but, that. Yeah. But yeah, so reach out and, and that's what we're here for. So spiritguideschool.com and you can find the services section there. And uh, so that's it for this week. And so please remember to like, subscribe, and share. If you are enjoying this, make sure you subscribe. That helps us to grow. Make sure you share. Rate, please. Go ahead and rate this. And we are still doing the, the occasional draw for a reading. So this is now for any platform that has a written review. So if you have a written review and you submit it, it must go via email to support at kellysparta.com. If it does not go to that email, you will not be entered into the drawing. No other pathway will get you there. Please, please hear me. So... But, you know, you can put that in and periodically I will draw for another re winner. I'm, I'm not going to do the videos for the drawings as I go because I forget to do them and it's really a hassle for me. <laughs> so I'm not doing that. But I will periodically reach out and go, hey, you won. Right. So and uh, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate you. We're, you're the reason we're here. We wouldn't be here if you weren't. And uh, so that's that's really awesome. And so don't forget that what you focus on expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. We'll see you next week. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, 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 oh